right? I can show it to you. It's become soft. I think you can see that. And then, next week will be the same. So we come back and have this wax sheet that's been softened. I want to place it. Okay. I want to place it. When you soften the wax, remember that it will become soft and so it may become flexible a lot. So you need to support it till it hardens up. Right? That's, I think that's stating the obvious there. But you see here a little bit, here it's kind of gone close. So you need to just maybe open it out a bit. Yeah. See that? It's really that simple. If it's boxing wax, you don't really need to heat up so much. Uh, it just adapts even without heating, so... Yeah. So, very simply have adapted that very easily. I think you can see that very clearly. Right? This area also adapted out very clearly. And this part needs to be adapted. Once this is done, you see the back. The back of the impression is like this. It needs to be sealed in so that it doesn't come off, right? And it doesn't allow any water or any plaster or stone to come to flow out, especially stone, because you're going to be using stone to pour the master cast. So I'm going to just show you the sealing again, the back end of the instrument. I'm just sealing it up. There you go. Melting the wax onto your beading wax and you're essentially sealed up. You can allow the wax to flow onto the zinc oxide also, it doesn't really matter because zinc oxide also is adherent, so it does help in the adhesion process. Okay, going over to the other end, on the other side, seal it up. Right. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Basically, I'm just putting this wax in Seal up the posterior most area as well. Many problem with adaptation, if you have a chip blower or a Bunsen burner like that at the tip, you can always see that, soften it up and it adapts. It adapts down very easily, very well. Then you can seal it up, there's, there's no big issue in that. Yeah. 
Now, of course, as you can see very clearly here, I have my boxing done three quarters of the way. One quarter is open, so obviously I want to, I want to soften, I want to complete this. I need some more wax for it, right? Some more wax for it. So I'm going to take some more of this wax. You see, I can just use a little bit, just a little bit. So I'm going to just cut a little bit. This bit, we are going to adapt it to close this side, this space. Okay, again, you want to soften the material so that it is flexible. Because it's very cold right now. This is uh, Benghazi in, on December 12th, I presume. So it's pretty cold. It's pretty cold. Here we go. So adapt it here. Right, I've adapted it. As you can see, I will get two joints, one here and one here. I'll have to seal that up. On the inside, it looks okay. I'm going to have to seal up the inside as well a little bit and the outside as well. So first the outside. First you want to seal up the outside. Heat your instrument. Flex this in. Push it onto that, yeah. Heat up your instrument. The back of the instrument again. Heat up your instrument. And seal. I hope that's clear, right? Now as far as the joints go, the joints be sealed up by angling your instrument across it, angling it up, it flows and it should seal up. And come to this as well, yeah, angle it a little bit. That's great. On the inside also you can do this. If you can see that, if you can see it, there is one piece of wax. This piece is on top of this piece. So you want to angle it from there to here, okay? So let me just change my camera over here. Possibly a better location. To see, right? I don't know if it is. Let me see. Hang on. Okay. All right. If you see that, you have wax here in this region. Okay, now that's my hand. This region. And this is on top of the down piece. So I want to angle it like this. I want to angle it, angle like this, from the top to the down, okay? I'm going to use the back of my instrument like before, all right? And take it up. I'm just going to touch it, angle it and touch it so that it joins up and do the same thing here. That's it, it's done. Right, it's done. You want to do you want to do some amount of sealing on the inside that is between the beading wax and the boxing wax. 
between the beading wax and the boxing wax. This juncture, if you want to do some sealing, you can do it as well. That is also again easily done with the back of the instrument. All you need to do is heat up the back of the instrument. Right, and then just touch. You're touching from the beading to the boxing. And you allow some of the beading material to flow. see that even this side even anteriorly yeah so it's reasonably beaded the way to check this if it is really good is to be by pouring some water but before that I just want to take off this I want to also check my heights. The rule of thumb here is that the height from the deepest, okay, let me just get this piece, yeah. Height from the deepest portion of the palette, that is the highest portion of the impression. See, the palette is like this, right? So the deepest portion of the palette will be the highest portion of the impression. The deepest portion will be the highest portion of the impression. So from the deepest portion if I were to just stick this wax because it's quite sticky and make a mark yeah take it out and I can darken my mark here darken my mark right you can darken it onto this side the minimum height you need from the deepest portion of the palette should be 13 millimeters so that the cast has enough thickness. So you want to check that if it's 30 millimeters. So let me get a ruler and have a look at it. Okay, we have a ruler here. And as you saw before, I made my mark and you want to check how much it is. As you can clearly see, the mark that I have, I'm gonna stick it up here so that it's clear. I'm not going to press too much because I don't want to distort my wax. You can clearly see that it is, oops, yeah. It is more than two centimeters or close to even to three centimeters. So that's too much actually, but I need the minimum and I'm going to remove the excess with a trimmer when I'm done. Just removing the wax from the surface of the impression that was I just used the wax to show you generally I would just I would just um, I would just use an inst uh, a scale a ruler directly now this is about three centimeters about 13 would be right halfway so I'm going to just use about a little less I'm going to make a little bit of a mark at 1.2 1.7 right and then I'm going to use it 1.7 I'm going to use it to mark out my other areas all right mark at 1.7 I'm going to use it to mark out my other areas all right let's go to the side okay so from this border all right, so it'll be about this much. Right from the inside, if I were to see, I'm just going to check. I'm just going to check. Just like to do a little bit of checking business. Okay, you don't need to do this at all. But I just like to check this. Right, I need to put this in the center. I've made my 30 millimeter mark. Put this in the center and see if I have the height. Right? If I don't have the height, I want to add. Okay, I don't have the height. So I'm not going to do this. I'm going to leave it close to the center there. I'm going to seal up this with a small piece of wax.
okay just seal it up smoothen it down with an instrument both on the outside and on the inside so it's smooth right so i'm going to leave it at this height because i can clearly see that anything less than this is a is going to be short on this side i'm going to take off this wax because i don't need that much height okay so i've drawn that line there as you can see a thin mark this side is correct in its height so i'm not going to reduce any more but the posterior part is excess so is this side so i'm going to take off that very easy just like before go in and then pull along the line instrument needs to be hot so that you don't distort your wax in the process it comes off very well very clearly follow your line right so we have the height corrected and this is the thing that we're going to pour and to check if it's all well and sealed you want to pour some water right and you want to see if there are any leaks I want to show this to you from a different angle so I'm going to just keep it down here right. okay we pull it back Let's make a small small leg there so that the material stays the cast doesn't turn over very easy you can always make it with some beading wax not at all difficult some beading wax squeeze it up into a small leg and you want to soften it and you want to just adapt it in the posterior there yeah maybe a little bit more height yeah okay one more on the other side Just, just adapted it. I've not done anything else. I just got that, right? I'd like to have maybe a little bit more height there. Because I've got a big handle. I like it to be supported. Take these guys off. To a nice big. Soften it a bit. Adapt it there. Done. Take off this guy. Add some more. It's more like Ajina. As the Arabic language would say, more like Do. Play Do, in fact. It's a lot of fun. Right? So I've got a handle, and when I keep it, it stays steady. Right? If you are unsure whether it will. Uh, remain you can always seal it up so that it doesn't go anywhere heat up the back of the instrument and seal it that's all Okay, so that's it. That's done. It's pretty cool. I'm going to show you from the side. All right, I've changed my camera to another location so you can clearly see how it is standing. This is my handle, right? I'll just zoom it in. 